Hi, welcome to another video. Hopefully it's a quickie. This one's going to help you learn what to buy by my mistakes. So I thought, rather than use this big development board, I just want a simple one. Uh, possibly with battery backup, that sort of stuff. So I bought this. It arrived yesterday. I had to go to uh, Royal Mail Rotherham pay £8.57 import tax plus £8 fees, £16.57. I think the whole board was roughly, I don't know, 30, 35, 40 pounds, something like that. Maybe 50 with a battery. So I wasn't too pleased about that. £16.57 import tax didn't help uh, by the fact Microelectronica had wrapped a small box in big bright yellow tape that said business use. And I'm not a business user. Uh, yeah, maybe if the tape wasn't on the package, I might have escaped the import tax as I have done previously, but not this time. Anyway, so this clicker board, $39 uh, US dollars plus the battery, which is something like 11 or $15. I mean, it's convenient because this clicker 2 uh, has got a PIC 32MX460L. There's a battery management down here, so not only does it regulate the power to the PIC microcontroller, it charges this lithium ion battery as well. So I thought it was convenient, plug it together, plug on a couple of uh, click boards and you're away. No, you're not. So from the other day, you'll remember I got this uh, analog devices waveform generator running and I used the frame sync uh, mode on the SPI. So I've got my uh, scope still locked to me checking this. Let me show you what I mean by framed sync, in case you're not familiar. Frame sync, so the chip select or framed synchronization, this frame sync would come down and you'd synchronize it for 16 clock pulses. And when, when you use frame sync, the SPI clock runs you know, all the time, doesn't switch off. So this is my first problem, this framed uh, sync bit instead of being one clock wide or one clock cycle I need it 16 clock cycles wide and on the PIC32 MX795 not a problem just go into the configuration bits and adjust it and it shows you here frame sync pulse width so frame sync pulse width but then there's a note here one and I thought I've never you know, never had to look at these numbers before I've always used the top microcontroller so look at number one, and then down the bottom. These bits are not available on all devices. Refer to the specific data sheet for availability. I thought, oh my God, here we go. Picked up the data sheet, it says go to the memory map and scroll down loads of pages. I'm on page 61, it says the PIC32 MX460F512. Presumably 512 is 512 megs of RAM. I want bit 27, the frame select pulse width bit. Oh, and I'll pick 32, MX460, so it's not like one of the baby ones. Frame sync pulse width isn't available. So that screwed that project. So here's a look at the reference manual. This is the Clicker 2, pick 32 MX reference manual. So you think, well, two slots, so presumably SPI1, SPI2. No, both of these are SPI2. I thought, right, I wanted, I wanted two SPIs for various reasons, but right, SPI2 is here, SPI1 is over here. RG6, RG7, RG8. Except with all of these, if you use frame select, you want the SS pin, the, yeah, the slave select pin on the microcontroller, and then they're not available on this board. I forget what the slave select is for SPI2, but for SPI1, frame select is actually going to this switch, RG9. So I took off this pull-up resistor, connected my wire there, and that's my frame select for SPI1. Secondly, I thought, yeah, before I'm trying to communicate with my device, make sure I've got the clock. And it took me hours, and I thought, don't say I can't even configure a PIC32, you know, just turn on the SPI. And that's because this clock here, look, SPI1 lines, hopefully you can see that. Clock, 
serial data in and serial data out. This SCK RG6 turn to the data sheet where we are. SCK1, so that's SPI1 clock, is on RD10, which is pin 70. And pin 70 is up here on the chip and it's not even brought out to on, onto any pin. So this board is labelled up wrong and they're still selling it. I'm a bit annoyed, shall we say politely. So SPI1 clock up there. So unless you've got a tiny soldering iron, a tiny bit of uh, wire, you're not going to be able to access SPI1. And so there's that brings me round to another point. On the PIC32 Light795 and the MZ microcontrollers, you can reconfigure loads of inputs and outputs. You have peripheral pin select. On this, there's no peripheral pin select, so you can't do anything about it. So I thought I must be going mad. But you can clearly see there, so this is clicker 2 manual, RG6 serial clock for the SPI1 lines. But it's not, RG6 is not a clock for SPI1. And in fact, looking at this picture, it says serial clock RG6 is, for, is, is on here, and I know these are labelled as SPI2. There's the two click sockets, so number one, number two, RG6, RG7, RG8, same there. So both of these are SPI2, so they've got the SPI1 line in the previous picture uh, wired up to the clock for SPI2. But it doesn't matter because I wondered why the chip select pin that you could use as a frame select, why are they just using random pins like RB1? And this one's RG13 in yellow, difficult to see. I thought, why are they using random pins for chip select as opposed to the dedicated slave select? And then you could bring out the frame select. But now I know they've not bothered because on this 460, you can't use frame select. Right, so there's no doubt Microelectronica have got loads of clickboards. Simply plug them in. But notice these are both on SPI2, you just you know, change the chip select. So that's what it looks like a Wi-Fi, uh, oh yeah, Wi-Fi Plus click. And that's obviously a relay click. So you can do simple functions on this board that don't require a lot of memory, you know, a lot of RAM, random access memory. So if I go down one page, oh look, there's a range of click boards that I'm assuming you can just plug into this clicker too. Oh look, FM click. Got one of those that was actually going to try and get going never figured out the code yet that fm uh, fm click they only released the software for the arm microcontrollers they've never done it for the uh, pic microcontrollers so that's a load of rubbish they say all these i think somewhere boards oh look 10 click boards plug and play Well, that is not a plug and play on a PIC microcontroller. Not until you spend days and days getting your head around the code. If it's not going to take you days and days to get around the code for that, you're, you're more clever than I am. Bearing in mind, it took me days and days to get the simple analog devices going. But you know, once you know the answer, it's simple, isn't it? But yeah, you try and configure all of these for a PIC microcontroller uh, yeah, without copying. So that's not plug and play there's no pick demonstration software or not for this clicker two board anyway but then if there was where do you put the tft speaking of tfts so this is just an 8-bit tft i had i think this one's actually from farnell uh, i'm not sure how much it was but although i see a microelectronica farnell are distributors for microelectronica this is a tft proto it's still only like 320 by 240, but this is a 16-bit input, so you can get it nice and fast, except for parallel mass support, by default, the lower bits are on port E. Well, E0 or E1 and another E port E pin 
is not available on this board. So there goes a 16-bit TFT out of the window because you cannot use parallel master port because not all of the data pins on E are available. That's forgetting the top 8 bits. So yeah, once I saw some of the E pins were missing, didn't even bother looking at the rest, just wired up to an 8 bit. <laughs> so, so far I thought, right, simple convenient package, plug the battery on, get your SBI, get a bit of frame select, and Bob your uncle, no chance. No frame select, uh, you, know, you, you can't use frame select because you haven't got all the bits available on this 460. Um, you have got the battery management, it does charge a battery. So if you want to turn on a couple of LEDs or run a simple clock, now the advantage over this, the clock on this circuit, compared to, this is the PIC 32 MZ running at 200 megs. I can't use this and leave it on all day, which is why it's yesterday's date. If I turn it off. Well, I can't use this and leave it on all day and pick up the time from the Wi-Fi like I used to do, because the internal clocks, or the real-time clock calendar and the main oscillator do not run off the local oscillators, the 8 meg and 32 kilohertz oscillators. I wrote to Michael Electronica, I said I'm having trouble with these bits, can't get the clock to run off the 32 kilohertz oscillator, you know, can you help, am I doing something stupid? They sent me the errata sheet for this PIC32MZ, I can't believe microchip churned out some of these PIC microcontrollers that would not run off those crystals. Wouldn't run off an 8 meg crystal and wouldn't run off the internal 32 kilohertz oscillator. You've got to do the fast RCs as a sort of resistor capacitor network and you can't trim those RC networks. You can calibrate the crystal inputs but not the RC networks and if you can't trim the RC networks you can't calibrate your clock which means this actually runs slow by a few minutes within 15-20 minutes so that chip's actually ridiculous Michael Electronic are kindly sending me another one when I get some in Right, my brother just phoned from Australia so now I'm totally lost where I was so clicker 2, it's got the PIC32 MX460512 not enough memory to get to run a camera so no plug and play there is a demo version of this available and I sh showed you on my Easy Pick Fusion version 7. Uh, FM click, no plug and play because the sample software was only released on the ARM 7. My analog devices that I showed you the other day how to get going simply they're probably, they're, well there are other methods, other ways of getting it going but I found simply use the frame select, no frame select on this device um, so in summary, if you want to run something simple, you want to figure out, you know, remap or redo the pins. Oh yeah, so no remapping. Redo the pins, get a, an 8-bit TFT going. You can. Uh, it's got no SD card or anything like that. It does have a battery management. If you want to run simple devices that don't need anything, no complicated code, and you want to use SPI2 only, uh, because as you saw on the drawing, this SPI1 is a lot of rubbish because the clock is SPI2. Uh, it does come with a bootloader, but I erased it and reprogrammed it. Um, I, I really, yeah, simple stuff. I can't think of anything good to say. It won't do what I want to do. I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5. I've said before, and I'll say it again, bought one of these, you know, I came away from Microelectronica just for small development boards. Yeah, this one's a bit of a mess, but this has got this, all the pins available. This is a PIC32. Oh, this one's actually the MZ. But this is like 20, 25, 30 pound, or you know, even if it's 40 pound, still a lot cheaper than uh, Microelectronica's sort of PIC32 MX7 uh, Micromedia board with a 4.3 inch display, I think it is. That's currently on the internet for $199. Uh, in English pounds about £150 plus £30 which is the import tax on a £150 item so you're looking at £190 for for their micromedia board yeah, £30 import tax because you will get stung I'd say get on back onto eBay get onto Snadpick have a look at the MZ boards or MX795 8-bit microcontrollers 
um, the PIG 24s, PIG 32s. And I've said before, and I'll say it again, I'll say it finally, I've always said there's nothing with starting at the top. If you're a beginner, you know, what do you get? Do you get a, like a, an 8-bit microcontroller starter board? No, I would get the 32-bit. The 32-bit compiler is more expensive than, say, Micro C Pro for PIC. So you're looking at Micro C Pro for PIC32. But the microcontrollers are far more powerful. You will never be wanting for more. And certainly not if you start at the MZ, which is their top microcontroller. Uh, and that's a standard bit I've had for years, a little SD card running a 5-inch screen. I have shown examples where I've got this TFT uh, touchscreen going and all that sort of stuff. I just dug it out of the cover just now. Uh, programmed that, that. It comes with a bootloader, but I use the Microelectronica's Microprog. So, I may as, you know, had I known the downfalls with a 460 chip, yeah, I, I didn't know, and I didn't look at the manual before getting it, I thought, Oh, the PIC32 has got to be good. Two click sockets, fantastic. What else could I ask for? Well, I could ask for SPI1 to be wired up properly. I could ask for the um, chip select to be brought out onto the relevant pins, not using random pins. But then, of course, I've got the downfalls on the software. Uh, isn't available on the, this, yeah, the, the 460. I'm really surprised. It's on the 795, but come down one level, not available. So it's actually, I have to say, pretty rubbish. If you want to flash a couple of LEDs, simple clock, maybe simple Wi-Fi things. I'm sure there's lots you could do with this, but it's not ever going to run a camera, ever. There's not enough memory. So why bother getting it? Just get a chip that will run a camera and everything else besides. So hopefully you'll learn by my mistakes. I can't run this analog devices because there's no frame select. Uh, I wanted to develop the um, PIC software for this FM radio. I wanted frame select as opposed to I2C. Forget it. Camera, forget it. 16-bit TFT, no parallel master port pins available. or well, not all 16, so forget it. There's lots you can forget, so it's a good battery charger. Thank you very much.